um, entertained and infotained with a story on Batik. And we have with us here the uh, founder of My Batik, Emilia Tan, who is also five months pregnant. Congratulations, first and foremost. Hello, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you so much. Okay, so how long have you loved Batik or, you know, creating Batik art? I started in 2003. Okay, I think this about year, a decade ago. Yeah, it's about 10 years actually. Uh huh. And you've always been in love with Batik. What instilled this love for Batik? Was it because of your grandparents, your mom, or what oh, no. was it? My first love, right? I mm -hmm. fall into a Batik because my first time I went to the Lolang Island. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, uh huh. And in Terengganu, and this was my first time in 2003, mm -hmm. and how I know about Batik. Okay, so today we're going to be showcasing a demonstration on how batik is made. This is like the traditional way or this is a little bit more modern already? Uh, this is a traditional tool. Mm -hmm. This is I have been not only in Malaysia, in Thailand, in India, in many countries also have batik. Right. So this is the basic way of doing that. It's like the hot wax, mm -hmm. the chanting. Chanting is a tool that way by we put into the hot wax to take out the wax. Okay. And then we draw on the cotton. So this is the cotton. Now I understand that, of course, uh, there's also the more fa uh, what's this? The more modern way of creating batik. Has that somewhat killed the art of batik in a way? Because you know they just stamp, 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 stamp. Oh, as, you know, stamp is a different technique. Ah, but it's, just, it's still batik. Yes, batik is as long as it's a price, you apply the wax, mm -hmm. the waxing mm -hmm. onto the cloth. Okay. And you let the colors to go into the waxing, and after that we remove the wax. So we boil and then we remove the wax and then we let the colors to stay there. Okay. So this is called batik. That's batik. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit more of what's going to take place here. You've got your chanting, you've got your hot wax, you've got your cotton. just a normal cotton white yes. cloth, right? Normally chanting there is a few sizes. It's according to the hole here. Mm -hmm. The hole. Okay. So this is the hole. The biggest hole is mean the XL, L size. All right. The smaller is S size, small size. Those so, are for the finer lines, yes, yeah? Yes, correct, yeah. Okay. But of course, we need to control the heat of the wax as well. Mm -hmm. So like for example, today I'm going to use this. This is the M size. I go in first because the wax is very hot. Yeah, So the, see that. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> dangerous actually. So, but we used to it already. So this one is, we use a piece of cloth mm -hmm. and then we just Wipe like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it won't come out. So after that, then I start to draw. Oh, so um, you just do a lot of freehand or do you normally trace a picture first and then you can just trace over? It depends on the design. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what do you prefer doing? You prefer going freehand? Yeah, freehand, yeah. Okay, what is your favourite motifs? Is it more on flowers or, or oh, animals? I believe that the good bate is more to the colour combination. Okay. The colour combination need to look good and you feel good also. Mm -hmm. It's just like what I'm wearing today. This is also a track design. Yeah, that's right. It's, very, yeah. it's, it's not your ordinary... You know how normally they have batik with lots of... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's different actually. So this one is a horse stamping and then after that I do some hand brush colour on top of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So this design today I'm going to show to all of you is the chanting. Chanting is very famous in Malaysia mm -hmm. and of course block is different in like in Indonesia also. So after that then I take out the wax. If too hot then I need to like blow a bit to let it cool down. So how would you know if it's too hot or too cold? Ah by experience, yes, I suppose. Correct, yeah. It's just like cooking. <laughs> so normally I would do a outline first. Mm -hmm. So after that I cover up the center where I'm going to do my artwork. So then, after that, yeah. how has batik evolved over the years? I mean, since uh, I mean, I'm sure you are so well read about how batik was way back then, and now that things have you know modernized a bit. Uh, batik used to start with the batik sarong. Batik sarong is two meter or two ellers, mm -hmm. and then those old time people they just wrap around their body. Mm -hmm. And right now, batik from the batik sarong go to the century. It's called Bate Era. Era is like people buy the fabric per meter. Okay, so it's like one whole gulong lah. Yes, yes. One whole now it's, Malaysia is more famous to the fashion. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you've done the outline for your batik here. Yes. Then after that, I'm going to like do a few line here, like. There's no hard and fast rule, right? Of ah uh, no. So you can just. This is already artistic. 
it's all depends on the design mm -hmm. and how you want it to be and of course every piece it won't be the same okay because every time when you pan the pander the mood and the feeling and mm -hmm. also the environment it won't be the same also correct that's true so that's how it turned out differently so this is how i do oh, you want to have a try <laughs> i'm not going to spoil your masterpiece Emilia. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So you've been doing this for 10 years now, right? Yeah. Okay. So this is how we do it. So after that, like for example, we do a few lines. And after that, we're going to do some colors. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm going to do an abstract design. Okay, and something very simple yeah, still. Yeah, it's inspired by the climber. This, this design is called Evolution of Life. It's where by the climber, like they cry up and then we have some blue sky hills. Yeah. Oh, okay. So for the basic colors, right, it's only have three colors. Like this is blue colors, mm -hmm. this is red, mm -hmm. and this is yellow. Okay. So there's no green actually. Oh, and you just mix and match to yes, create correct. the colors. Yes. Okay. So normally, butter is, many people they say, oh, why butter is expensive? It's all because of the handmade and the time consumed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for example, right now I'm going to just start to color a bit. Okay. So after I want to see how is the result. Then after that, if I'm not happy with it, I will continue to do some waxing on that. Oh, okay. Okay, so go ahead. I'll let you go did. ahead and show your artistic <laughs> expression on this batik piece. So for the brush, right, normally we will use three, three sizes. Mm -hmm. Big one, a uh, small and a medium. So like for example, I'm going to color here like this is the blue colors. Like just do a few dots here. Oh, you don't have to, you know, paint over the whole area. Uh, I'm going to paint this part, but not this part. Oh. Ah, never mind. Okay, I'll just go with your lead. So this is like... Oh, this part I that's do easier. Like oh, because the uh, wax actually stops it from spreading. Yes. yes, it's the same idea like how we do the crayon and the watercolors mm -hmm. when we are in the primary school, actually. Yeah, it's the same a idea. long time ago for me. It's the same idea. <laughs> so, for example, like this one is the red, red. color. Then we do a few lot here, mm -hmm. and this dot, and then, okay, if now I want to have some purple color actually. Yeah. So how I can get the purple color is, I do some red here first, then add some water, mm -hmm. and then a bit dry. That's it. easy, right? It doesn't go and yeah, get will. absorbed to the other side. Yeah, and then after that I do some blue, so the purple will come out. Oh yeah, that's right. Mm. There you go. Yeah, this is how. And it's a different sort of purple. This side and this purple is yes. a little bit more redder. So this is different a bit. So if let's say mm -hmm. we want to have some like green colors, so the green would be blue and yellow, yes. right? Yeah. But we always start with the light color first. I see. Light colors. This is yellow. You know, I've got friends like um, Aisha Sinclair, who's actually um, a, a host for our morning show. Mm -hmm. um, she actually loves batik. And also another girlfriend of mine, Sazi, who's actually do in New York right now, showcasing mm -hmm. her fashion line. And all of them showcase a lot of batik influences in their fashion line. Do you think that batik has, is slowly coming, coming back? Batik is always there. Okay. It's always there. It's just some people, they don't understand why it's batik the consumer. I believe the public education and the public information is very important. But luckily right now the social media is very advanced and mm -hmm. the technology is there, information technology. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of information so everyone can search Google easily about Bate actually. So there's more awareness with regards yes, to material. Yes. And, and I think like you said, the evolution of Bate is just it's no longer looking so old in that sense. Yeah. It's modern, it's more contemporary, so it's also attracting the younger customers out there. Welcome back to the show. We are still with Emilia, the founder of My Bate, and today she's going to not just tell us a little bit more about Bate, but also how you can style it. So we've got an array of things here that is made out of Bate. No longer is it just the sarong, mm -hmm. but there's also, you know, you can you can put Bate on uh, covers for books, uh, for handbags and clutches. I mean, you name it. You've got a lot of other materials out there made out of batik, right? Yes, yes. For example, like in the old times, right, this mm -hmm. is batik sarong. Okay. It's like the sarong part is like they must have the, what do you call that? The, <laughs> the, the, this is so kepala. Okay. Head. This is border. 
all right? And this is the body, this is called bada. And this would be about two meters, right? Yes, correct. Okay. Yeah. And that's the traditional bate used for sarong. And then this one, we use this stem to stem it. Ah, okay. okay. It's a traditional. But today, mm -hmm. from this traditional bate, from the bate sarong, mm -hmm. we, we have this one also, the... I love this type of um, uh, bate. This is chanting. So we use the traditional mopte, the one kulit, and then we draw the chanting, and then this is how we make it. Ah, I see. Okay. okay. This is called scarf, the square scarf. And batik can be done on most material? This is um, silk? Or is batik this? only can apply on the natural fiber. I see. Okay. 100% cotton or 100% silk. Okay. Fair enough. So, some people, they think, that, ah, how come the piece of bate that I bought is like the color run away and all this? Mm -hmm. There's only two reasons actually this thing happened. Okay. The first thing maybe is the material is not 100% pure. I see. Maybe the maker also don't understand. It's mm -hmm. like maybe like only 95% or maybe like 90% like cotton or silk. Inside have some polyester material inside. Okay, now before we continue with our batik discussion over here, of my batik, we've got Emilia here and we're still on the topic of batik. Um, so earlier on we were talking about the silk, which the beautiful wayang kulit, which is actually your top seller here. Yes. Um, and this was done with the chanting as opposed yes. to your, the, the sarong, which is used by the stamp, right? Um, what are some of the do's and don'ts in maintaining batik? Maintaining is don't use a too strong detergent. Okay. If you use very strong detergent, like certain brand, you say they remove your stand and all this because it's too powerful. When you go into this kind, right, mm. the fabric, they will take off everything. You know, how about sometimes I've got my, my like a white base, um, well, sort of lighter colored sarong, and then it, you know, it just becomes a bit yellow. Yes. You know what I mean? Is there any way we can do that without using? Cause most people use bleach, but then you bleach the other colors, and I don't want that, right? Do you have any tips on that? Okay. Normally, we don't use too strong detergent. We use hand wash, and then we ah. don't put it directly to the sun. Okay. Maybe you can show me your piece, see how we can touch up back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, touch I up. love Emilia. <laughs> All right, we've got a mannequin next to Amelia, and uh, man uh, what she's going to do is just showcase us how s uh, some of the ways where you can style mm. batik. Over to you, Emilia. Okay, actually butter is a very simple, very simple, like, if let's say you want to wear a piece of butter, many people they think, oh, I must turn into like Baju Kurong or Kebaya. Yeah. It might take very really costly because tailoring cost is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Actually, now the day is very really easy. What you need is just I a... like that. It's pretty. A piece of this, or this, yeah, this is pastel color. <laughs> so, you need a piece of this paring, and then you need one of this brush. Mm -hmm. And then, for example, just like, just two little fabric, All right, so this is basically a beautiful silk, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it is silk uh, sarong. Yes. Batik sarong, which uh, is being styled by Emilia, who's a founder of my batik. And all you need is just this beautiful piece with just a brooch, which you can almost find everywhere nowadays. It's no longer here. This is the one. Yeah. And all you have to do is just tie on top. Yeah. And you can also gather some from the front. Yes. And then from the front here, mm -hmm. what you can do is... You know, the one thing I love about the pario or the sarong is that you can just go crazy, be creative. And you can, ne you, you know, you always find different ways into making it to look like a dress or a t-shirt or a tube, depending on how you tie it. Sometimes also according to your body shape. But yeah. this is definitely a must-have when you're going out to the seaside or when you're going for a beach getaway. You can never go wrong with a really nice sarong or pario. Ah, oh, there you go. It's like a small, like a yeah. short cocktail dress now. Yeah, is that a small? Yeah. Yeah, like a short cocktail dress. Again, you will know how to try and do it on yourself. It's practice makes perfect, as everyone says. And ideally, it's how you like it. Sometimes you want the length to be longer or shorter. Okay. If you do want to put also can, if you want to put also can. Okay. Let's say I'm going to put this in. Mm -hmm. How did I say? Yeah. You notice that for women, batik is more 
um, you know, accepted by the women in fashion when they're donning batik, but for men, not really, yeah? Um, men, actually, they have too many options. <laughs> <laughs> really? I thought it was just women. <laughs> so, men normally, like, because this is more colourful things, mm -hmm. for men normally, they seldom to wear too colourful. Okay. Yeah. Alright. So, this is a simple design that you can just wear it like when you are going out for a function, mm -hmm. or you at home also can, or you want just want to put on a jacket also can, just to make it in the office way also can. Wow, there's huh? a lot of things. Actually, I, I've, I've seen someone, uh, a corporate leader, mind you, who wore like a black skirt mm -hmm. and black jacket, but inside she used this like a little like yes. a little tube. So that was really nice because um, es essentially she, you know, she was doing an overseas meeting, and everyone was like, you know, looking at her and saying, "What is this? Oh, it's batik from my hometown." Blah 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 blah. That's a nice way of you know showcasing the wonders of your own country, right? Yes. Okay. So, what else do we have to share here with you, uh, with us, uh, the viewers? Um, that's a really popular thing, apart from the uh, silk. Why I call it? From the hand drawn. Mm -hmm. Hand drawn actually the the challenge in the bate right is like how we control the design. Okay. Because sometimes because it's like handmade, so sometimes it might get wrong, you know, because the painter, you know, mm -hmm. sometimes they feel no good or headband or whatever, you know, but <laughs> still need to do the bate. So this is how we control the design. Like we come up with a template first. Okay. Then this is how we control the sizes. This is how we control the inventory. Uh-huh. And then this is how we transfer the thing and then go into the design. Like for example, like a piece of carton. Mm -hmm. This is how we make it. So we make sure the quality is there. Because the finishing now today is very important. So this one, the kaftan was done first and then you painted over or how does it work? We make the fabric first. Oh, wow. So this so is we tune tune law when they yeah. then they cut it. Yes, only then we cut it. So we might have a template to keep the motif in the center. I see. So in the right place. For example, from the hand drawn bate, we also have like block print bate, like just now I show you mm -hmm. the block with this thing. Mm -hmm. From the block print, because block print is a salon. So right now we transfer the salon into the like the merchandise, like for example, like small little notebook. It's even toys. I like this little Yeah, this is more like lifestyle item. Mm -hmm. So like to encourage the young people now so they also to use bate. Okay. In their lifestyle. So in lieu of Malaysia Day tomorrow, what would you like to say to Malaysians out there to, you know, to get back the pride of loving our batik? Must support Malaysian bate. <laughs> <laughs> as simple as that. Well, yeah. thank you so much, Emilia, and happy Malaysia Day. Thank you so and much. And good, uh, a safe delivery to you, okay? It's her first child, so she was a bit nervous. She was asking me some tips earlier on during the commercial break. <laughs>